So one of the most common questions I get is how to prevent a pocket screw from popping through on the other side when you're joining two pieces like this. Nobody likes to see that. I'm gonna show you how to make sure that never happens again to you. Also, I'm gonna show you how to fix that once it does happen, plus many more pocket hole tips and tricks. Stay tuned. There is a very simple way to prevent that from ever happening again to you so that the pocket hole screw does not break through the other side of the board that you're joining. Let me show you how. So this is one by material. This is a one by six, and we're using the masket pocket hole jig to join the two boards together. These are actually three quarters of an inch thick. And so we've got our setting at three quarters of an inch. You use the included depth guide to set your pocket hole bit stop collar depth. The easiest and simplest way to make sure that that doesn't happen to you again when you're drilling pocket holes, it's extremely simple. You've got your depth stop at three quarters of an inch. You set your bit at three quarters of an inch and it's still breaking through. Let me show you how to fix it. Simply back off the stop collar raise it up about an eighth inch. If you're not sure what an eighth inch is, you can just rotate this depth guide around till it says seven eighths of an inch. Set your depth on your depth collar at seven eighths instead of three quarters. When you rotate this around to three quarter, it's going to be one eighth of an inch higher or less deep or more shallow than you're actually needing to drill. This will prevent those screws from breaking through. This goes for all pocket o jigs, no matter what brand you're using. I found this to be pretty common, especially when you're joining softwoods like spruce, pine, things like that, because they compress more because they're softer. Now, if I'm joining those two together with the settings that I created versus the recommended settings, no breakthrough. If it's still breaking through the wood and you set your stop collar, just like I showed you, I'll tell you why that is in just a minute. If you like that first tip, stick around. I've got a lot more coming. I'm Matt with 731Bullworks.com. They call me the Pocket Hole King. I've also got PocketHoleKing.com if you want to go check that out. I want to teach you some things about Pocket Hole Joiner that may help you along your way in your woodworking journey. I'm here to help you. Let's get started. So when you drive your Pocket Hole screws, you want to make sure to adjust down the pressure or the torque that your drill, if it has that setting, you can turn that down so that it's not driving it as hard. Same thing as your impact driver, you flip that down to a one so that it doesn't actually force the screw through the other side of the material. So you're making a project and one of your screws pops through because you didn't have the depth set correctly or you overdrove the screw and now it's popped through your project and you're just, you're devastated, right? Because now you got a giant hole with this screw popping through, plus it split the wood a little bit. So how do we fix it? Well, the first thing you gotta do is you're gonna need to back that screw out. You wanna back it till it's beneath the surface of the wood, okay? And typically on a softwood, it has already torn through some of this stuff. And you wanna get that all that loose wood off of there because it's gonna come off when you sand it anyway. If you're painting this, it really doesn't matter. You can use some wood filler, sand it, paint over it. Nobody's ever gonna know except for you and the good Lord, right? But if you're staining it, then you're gonna to want to that to blend with knot holes and things like that. That's where this stuff comes in. And I've got a whole video dedicated to CA glue. Basically, this is a colored super glue. It dries extremely fast when you use the accelerator with it, okay? This stuff is so simple to use. It dries hard as a rock. So here, you're just gonna take, this is brown. I like to use brown on if I'm staining with dark walnut, special walnut, that type colors. If you're staining with a black color, then you would use the black colored CA glue. But you put a little dab on there, let it kind of soak in for just a minute, and then you'll take your activator, spray that activator on there. It's gonna dry within 30 seconds, usually within about 15 or 20 seconds. It'll dry that CA glue up. Then you can sand that smooth and it's gonna look like a knot hole. And that's how you fix when those screws pop through like that. When you're putting together, especially like if you're doing panels, so we'll pretend this is a panel glue up where you're making a tabletop or something. When you use pocket holes, if these two edges aren't perfectly square, when the pocket holes tighten up, it's going to cause this these two pieces of wood to cant a little bit like that. And when that happens, your tabletop's gonna be all wompy jawed because you'll have, uh, say, four or five screws per uh, board and every time you tighten one down, it just gets like that. So make sure these two edges are actually perfectly square, either with a jointer or jointing with a table saw like I've done before. I'll link a video in the description below on how to joint with a table saw. I used to put wood together like that. When you don't use the proper clamps, what happens is your two pieces of wood are actually uneven now. You see that lip? So now I have to do something about that. I either have to come in and sand that or I have to plane that down somehow. So the best way to prevent that from happening is a face clamp. 
This is a basket brand face clamp. You can get any kind you want. I'll put links in the description below to these tools. I didn't have one of these for a very long time. I really didn't think they were necessary, but I was absolutely wrong about that. So the way these work is there's two flat pieces of metal on each side, and they actually will tilt to fit the, uh, however the wood is oriented uh, on a flat surface. And then there's a tightening uh, screw down here that actually adjusts the tension uh, when the clamps come together. And then there's a quick release right there that lets you release it. When you put this face clamp on like that, I've got it close to that screw. This is perfectly flush now because these two pieces of wood are exactly the same thickness. So this is gonna keep that nice and flush and it's not going to let it get off balance or out of alignment because you've got this clamp on there. What I like to do is if you can get a face clamp on it, if it's in a place where you can, is to put it right where the screw is going to go in. Even if you've got two side by side, I'll clamp that side and then I'll just move the clamp over. Now you can see that that joint is almost perfectly flush. I mean, it's not exactly perfect, but it is much, much closer. Uh, right down here is perfectly flush. There is a very, very tiny lip that you could hit with 120 grit sandpaper, a couple of passes, and that would be flush. Uh, the bottom side is flush as well. So those face clamps are worth every penny. They're only about, I don't know, 15 or $20. So I highly recommend getting a couple of them. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all our new content. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're building your project, it's gonna be outdoors. Make sure you use outdoor rated screws versus interior screws. And the way you tell those apart is a lot of times these interior screws are just gonna be silver. They're like zinc coated or something like that. And these outdoor screws actually have like a, almost a plastic uh, looking coating on there and they're, they're blue. I don't know exactly what they're coated with, but they feel like, like a plastic coating and that keeps them things from rusting. So when you got a project like our recent outdoor sectional build, you wanna make sure you're using outdoor screws on that because the last thing you want to happen is you've made this awesome project and in a year or two down the road, those screws start rusting and breaking on you. You don't want that to happen. Use those outdoor screws for outdoor projects. They're about the same price as an interior screw. You just need to decide which one you're gonna need. When you get ready to put some pocket holes in some of this beautiful purple heart, ooh. If you're drilling into hardwoods like oak, purple heart, cherry, maple, anything like that, you're using hardwoods, you wanna make sure that you're picking the right screw. So here you see we have a piece of purple heart, which is a very hard wood. We got a piece of spruce, which is very soft like pine. On the soft woods like pine and spruce, you're gonna be using those coarse thread screws. And on hard woods, you'll be using these more fine thread. You can really see the difference with them sitting side by side, the difference in the fine versus the coarse threads. The fine threads are made with that self-tapping tip so that it will help actually not split your hardwoods. So you make sure you use those fine threads for hardwood. Another good thing to remember is if you're using plywood, say three quarter inch or half inch plywood for to build a project, whether that be cabinets or whatever you're making out of the plywood, you need to pocket hole join those things together. Make sure you measure your plywood because three quarter inch plywood is rarely ever three quarters of an inch actual. So if you're gonna be setting your pocket hole jig at three quarters of an inch, you set your bit depth at three quarters of an inch, it's gonna to drill too deep. The actual thickness of the plywood, and even in this case here where I've got this piece, it's about a full 16th inch shot of three quarters of an inch. But you wanna make sure you set the depth correct on your pocket hole jig and your bit. One thing that I actually waited a very long time to buy is this, I think it's called a 90 degree clamp, but I typically just call it a thingamajig clamp. This one's made from Craig, it's a really good uh, clamp. It is that same flat metal piece that will adjust a little bit to however it's oriented on the board. And it's got a 3 8 inch metal dowel actually made into it. And you're just gonna clamp that into that pocket hole. So if you've got two pocket holes or a long panel, you can actually take this and help hold it in place. This thing is fantastic. I should have got one of these a very, very long time ago. Now these are a little more expensive than your face clamp. This one I think is like $30 or so. I'll put a link in the description below to the thingamajig clamp. But these work awesome if you're trying to join two pieces at a 90 degree angle, which you do a lot in pocket hole joinery. And then once you have that screw in there, that screw is gonna act like a clamp and you can just move this one off and put a screw in that hole and you're done. Another neat little trick you can do with a pocket hole bit is you can loosen this stop collar off, slide it down onto your bit. So I'm gonna set this to about halfway of the thickness of the lumber. So you'll just set that stop collar 
to where the shoulder of this bit, not the plong point, but this shoulder right here is about halfway of the thickness of your stock or your piece of wood. And then you'll just tighten down that stock collar and make sure that it's actually on the flat part of your drill bit and it doesn't go down into the groove just because it won't tighten up right. So now you can use this to countersink a screw. So I'm joining these two without pocket. If I'm not using a pocket hole for whatever reason, I want to join these together. All you gotta do now is you've already got that 3 8 inch hole for the countersink. You can just take a wood dowel like this, this is a 3 8 inch dowel, put a little wood glue on it. You'll hear it when it bottoms out. Just take a flush trim saw at that point. Trim that dowel off, you can sand it flat and it'll give you a good little. Now you can see that dowel is right there. You sanded it flush and that gives you a nice, a different option for joinery if you don't want those pocket hole screws showing, but you still want to screw everything together. You can just use those dowel rods and fill that hole. You got a counter, a perfectly drilled 3 8 inch countersunk hole. You can use those 3 8 inch dowels to fill that and then sand them flush. If you're interested in any of the tools, the jigs, supplies that we're using in this video, there's a link in the description below to take you to those products. So I also get a lot of questions asking if they can just use a regular screw instead of a pocket hole screw. I don't recommend that because a pocket hole screw actually has a flat head, almost like a washer, washer on the end right there. Whereas a typical screw, you see it has that angled head on there. That's gonna let it drive too deep for you and you're not gonna like the outcome because it's gonna be popping through like before and you're gonna to have to fix that hole. So I would highly recommend just picking up some pocket screws. Make sure you're getting good quality ones. I'll drop links in the description below to some that I recommend so that you don't get cheap ones that break on you too easy. So this is a cross section. I just cut this board so that you can see what a pocket hole looks like from the side. And you see where this bit has gone in there and it stops right there. What does that do? They, you can actually see the imprint of the long bit right there. It's pretty cool. So that stops right there and creates that shoulder but it also has pre-drilled the hole for you. So when you drive your regular pocket screw in there, it drives down until it hits the shoulder and it stops. And you can see that the pocket screw is sticking through there. So that's how they work and that's how they're supposed to work. What happens when you use a regular screw that has that angled head and doesn't have the washer head, just like a pocket screw has that, that flat head. When you use this type screw and it drives down in there, what ends up happening is that there's nowhere to stop because of that angled head, so it just continues to go. And you can even see here, it's, it, it continues to push on through until it actually drive on past the, where that shoulder's at, and it'll actually go too deep or it'll bust, bust the wood because it wasn't, it wasn't made for this type of screw. You know what time it is, power tip time. So my power tip for pocket hole joinery is to always, always, always have an extra pocket hole drill bit on hand. If you've been using pocket hole joiner very long at all, you know that the tips of these pocket hole bits are very, very brittle and fragile. You'll drop it, it'll hit the pavement, and the next thing you know, well, bam You've broken the tip off and it no longer works as a pocket hole bit. So it actually don't work for anything. You just throw it away. They're not expensive at all. So make sure you pick up a couple. I usually keep at least two or three on hand because I'm very clumsy. I'll drop the pocket hole bit and it'll hit the concrete and then break the tip right off. Uh, when you do throw them away, keep the stop collar because they're still good and you may need it one down the road. Here's a bonus tip for you. This is a rare earth magnet. They are very, very, very sticky. They, they will stick to metal. This is aluminum, it won't stick to that. It won't stick to that, it won't stick to that. All that's aluminum. But this piece, the actual clamp, is metal. It'll stick to that. Why do you need a magnet there? Your bits will stick to it. And so will your Allen wrenches so that you can adjust your pocket hole jig. This is extremely handy because it keeps everything right here, especially if you don't have a box to keep it in. It doesn't get in the way of the clamp. It doesn't get in the way of the material that you're using to drill pocket holes with. Now I just threw those on there and you can see they're, they're pretty, it's a pretty strong magnet. You can actually stick them through from the bottom or on the other side and it keeps it a little more out of the way. That's just a good quick fix for you. You can see it's not in the way of the pocket hole uh, clamp at all. You can just move those back and forth and it'll hold everything in place so that you don't, so that you don't lose any of your bits, drivers or uh, adjustment wrenches. So I get a lot of questions asking what size pocket hole screw you need for the size material that you're gonna be using to join together. Go to pocketholeking.com right there on the front page. I've got a screw guide that tells you exactly what size screw you're gonna need for the material size you're using.
Hey, these tips are Pocket Old King approved. Go to pocketoldking.com, check my new website out. Click that box right there. It's gonna take you to the next set of woodworking tips and tricks. If you click that box, you get that big old virtual fist bump. I thank you so much for supporting this channel. Click the box, that's the best way you can support us. Thank you very much, I hope this was helpful.